नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन टेन ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन यूजिंग वैल्यू इंजीनियरिंग सो एज यू आर वेल अवेयर दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द फंक्शनल एनालिसिस पार्ट ऑफ अवर कोर्स जस्ट टू हैव अ ब्रीफ रिव्यू ऑफ वट वी हैव कवर टिल डेट बिकॉज टूडे वी विल बी वाइंडिंग अप द सेकेंड वीक डिस्कशन एंड द कोर्स इज अ फोर वीक कोर्स हैविंग टेन आवर्स ऑफ डिस्कशन दैट इज ट्वेंटी सेशन ऑफ हाफ एन आवर ईच सो टूडे इन अ वे वी आर मिड वे थ्रू अवर कोर्स सो वट वी हैव कवर्ड टिल डेट वी हैव ट्राइड टू कवर द बेसिक एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन मे बी वन और टू सेशन द प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल द डिफरेंट स्टेजिज स्टेप्स फेजिज ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन प्रोसेस and we have tried to emphasize the importance of an concept that is value engineering which is not usually covered in most of the ug curriculum so we are trying to integrate the concept of value engineering with the product design process because it helps us to achieve a product with a design which is competitive in the uh, market so basically the target is to help the designers with a additional skill set that they can focus on the cost of the product also during the design stage and we have seen the basic aspects of value engineering what value engineering is all about the definitions of value engineering the role of creativity in value engineering then we have seen that value of any product can be represented as a ratio of function by cost and cost structure or the costing process for a product is almost taught in the call in the courses as all of us know that the cost of any product will be made up of the inputs that are being used the infrastructure that is being used to create that product so the costing part is not that difficult but the functional part is an important aspect because if we focus on the function of the product our product design may change completely and as we have taken few example even the design may become redundant the function of a product can be integrated with some other product which we are already using or possessing so therefore it is important to understand the function of a product and product as all of us know that they are the assembly of a large number of sub components or sub parts if we take example of a bigger product let us take an example of an aircraft so the aircraft is made up of so many different elements different sub parts different sub assemblies so we have to see that how these sub assemblies how these sub parts how these components play an integral role in defining the overall performance of the product and how the functions of each and every product or, or each and every sub assembly or part are interacting with each other whether the functions are independent of each other or the functions are interacting with each other and then we can try to eliminate some of the components or parts by integrating the functions that they are achieving with the already existing part or more important parts so therefore we have to analyze the functions of the product very very systematically logically and we have to identify the function first create a alternative and then finally refine the alternative and finally we have to integrate that modified design into our product so basically we will try to understand today an important technique which we call as the functional analysis system technique so functional analysis system technique is a systematic approach of finding out maybe the redundant functions or finding out the basic function and the higher order function of a product and to redesign the part by focusing on some of the non value adding functions that that are integrated into the product because of n number of reasons and they as, as this topic is also quite exhaustive we have not been able to cover that what are the reasons for the poor value into the product now if i ask you because here we are trying to find out some of the elements sub parts components in a assembly or in a product which are not adding any value to the product how we can uh, you can say say that these parts sub assemblies do exist in the product now value engineering is a very old approach 
Now some of you may counter question and may challenge that once the value engineering concept was used while designing this product, how these poor value functions have come into existence in the product. It means the designers have failed in their approach while they were designing this product. So, the answer to this question is no, the designers have not failed, but the designers have so many constraints when they are designing the product. And the most important constraint is the time constraint. Today the company decides to come up with a new product. They will set a very tight deadline, a very stringent deadline that by such, such and such date the design must be ready. By such and such date the manufacturing must be completed or must start and then the product has to be launched on a particular day. The day may be sacrosanct or the day may be auspicious for the company or maybe that may be the raising day of the company. So, that, that day normally justifies or normally you can say is the deadline for the designers and the product team or the project team to launch the product and therefore, the time constraint usually hinders the creativity of the designers. So, they are not going to look at large number of alternatives, they will focus only on the existing knowledge and the standard practice of design and would like to come up with the design within the stipulated time frame. And therefore, while doing that without looking much into the other aspects of design or the other aspects of alternatives they come up with a product which is definitely going to satisfy the functional requirement of the product, but may not be the best product from the value point of view. And therefore, once the product has been launched, again the concepts of value analysis are used to find out, to locate the poor value functions and try to eliminate them in due course of time. And therefore, you will see that many times companies are coming up with the extended version or the modified versions or the updated version of their product. Why? Because at a later stage they realize that there are better alternatives in terms of materials, in terms of processes, in terms of shapes, in terms of sizes which can even update or even help us to create a new product which is better than our existing product. So, that is the basic concept that there are definitely some poor values, poor value functions in our product and we have to locate them, identify them and try to eliminate them from our product. And functional analysis system technique normally helps us in achieving that target because here we blast the product into the individual components and then try to see what is the function of each and every component. Up to that we have already covered in our previous sessions also where we we have taken an example of a lamp post where there are different parts of the lamp post each and every part is accomplishing one or the other function. So, we have seen that for each part there are primary functions and there are secondary functions. So, that is what our objective. So, we try to find that these are the basic functions of this product these are the secondary functions. Sometimes we may like to combine two secondary functions of two different parts together and then may we even uh, able to combine the two parts together into a single modular part. So, functional analysis system technique will also work on the similar principle as we have seen in our previous session. We will try to find out the basic function or the lower order function, the higher order function and then finally, try to see that what can be eliminated. Now, let us quickly see the question that every learner must be able to answer is that why we are using a fast diagram. So, here if you can see that two parts are there functional analysis which we have already covered in our previous session and the second is the system technique. So, here we will try to analyze the whole system using this technique. So, we will draw a fast diagram and try to understand that how the functional analysis can be done in a more systematic manner analyzing the system as a whole. Now, just to have a brief review of what does this technique mean and how it originated. So, Charles Bythewe developed fast diagrams in 1964. So, it is more than 60 years old technique. Fast diagrams are function oriented. So, this is very, very important. 
normally many diagrams like we have seen a product life cycle on x axis we have time. So, here in, in the fast diagrams we do not have time, time <coughs> is not a important ingredient. Yes, we have when also in the fast diagram, but that is related to the functional analysis part. So, normally the focus area in case of fast diagrams are the functions being achieved by each and every part, each and every component of the product. So, fast permits people with dissimilar technical background or from diverse technical backgrounds to effectively communicate and resolve the issues. So, we have to resolve certain issues, we have to make our product better, make our product more valuable. So, those issues we have to resolve that require multidisciplined consideration. So, here different people can communicate, different people can come together, coordinate, communicate and come up with a product which is better than the existing product. So, fast builds up the value analysis by linking the simply expressed this already you know verb noun definition. So, one example those who are listening to this session only conduct current. So, conduct is verb, uh, conduct is verb and current is noun. So, this is a verb noun definition of a function to describe the complex system. So, we will take one example today so that you are able to uh, assimilate the knowledge about the fast in today's session only. So, here we for every function we will use a verb noun definition. So, verb noun definition will help us to blast our bigger system into the individual components and each component we will like to write a verb noun definition or the definition of the function. Fast is not an end product or result, but rather a beginning. So, first and foremost we have to see that fast we have to analyze at a later stage. First thing is to put all the information together. We have to put all information together for each and every part. We must identify the basic function of that product. We have to write of that part or sub assembly and we have to write verb and noun definition for that. Once that is done, then we have to sit with a multifunctional team and see that what are the areas of improvement, where there is a scope of improvement, what are the parts that we can eliminate, what are the parts that are not adding any value to the overall product function and how these can be combined or eliminated. So, this is the basic background of the fast diagram. Now, this is a visual layout of products function that we will try to see. Starts with the basic function and builds to the right with the supporting or the secondary function. So, right from the basic to the secondary function we would like to go. For example, if we take a uh, example of a lead pencil that we used to use when we were in school. So, we can say what is the basic function of a lead pencil. So, it is supposed to make marks. Even we can go a step lower, we can say to spread lead. So, this is the basic function. Then next level is make marks. Why to make marks? To write suppose words. Why do you want to write words? To communicate ideas. Why do you want to communicate ideas? To transmit thoughts. Why do you transmit thoughts? To change attitudes. So, you can see that from this direction we are asking why type of questions and we are getting to the next level of the function. So, what is the basic function of a lead pencil? Spread lead. Why to make marks? Why do we need to make marks to write words? Why do we write words to communicate ideas? Why do we communicate ideas to transmit thoughts? Why do we transmit thoughts to change the attitude? So, we are moving in this direction and asking why type of questions. Now, if we move in the opposite direction that is this direction, we can ask how type of questions. You can start asking how the attitudes can be changed by transmitting the thoughts. 
how the thoughts can be transmitted by communication of ideas, how the ideas can be communicated by writing words, how the words can be written by making marks, how can we make the marks by spreading the lead. So, these two why and how type of questions if we start asking for each and every product, we will be able to find out that what is the basic function of the product, what is the secondary function of the product, what is the tertiary function of the product. So, how and why type of questions are very useful and once we are able to make this type of an analysis of a product, we will be able to understand. Now, from this diagram, we can say that the basic function comes out to be to spread the lead and this is now a challenge for the designer to find out means, mechanisms, techniques of spreading lead on a piece of paper. So, the spread lead has to be spread by a painter also for making the sketches, it has to be used by an engineer also to make the engineering drawings, it has to be used by a child also to write uh, alphabets or the numerals. So, spreading lead is the basic function now and it has to be used by a diverse uh, background or a diverse set of people. So, as a designer he has to see that how the this basic function of spreading lead has to be achieved by the product and the product has to be a pencil. It can be a different type of pencil you can see around you, you will find different types of pencil each having the basic function of spreading lead. So, that is the you can say the basic background of fast diagram why and how type of questions have to be asked. Now, why do a fast di diagram? Why do we need to draw a fast diagram? Because it helps us to understand the functions. You can see here one example already I have taken, it has helped us to understand the functions. So, to be eliminated or improved. Now, these functions once we have understood, we may like to eliminate the functions, we may like to improve the functions or how to deliver the basic functions. Even our product design we may like to change in order to have a better product. So, we can see that once through the fast diagram we are able to understand the function of our product, function of each and every component of our product, we will definitely be able to use our creative skills to come up with a better alternative design which will be having improved functions which will be able to satisfy the basic function in a better manner which will be able to eliminate the unnecessary or redundant functions which are not adding any value to our product. So, that, that is going to be the final outcome of representing of the functional analysis of our product as a fast diagram. Now, this is what I have uh, already explained basically we ask how and why type of questions. So, this is how type of question we are asking in this direction and why type of questions we are asking in this direction. And in the previous slide, I have just explained with the help of a pencil or example of an pencil. So, when we ask how and why type of questions, we will be able to find out the basic as well as the higher order functions of the product. So, this is basically the boundary line for our fast diagram and this total is the scope of study. It will represent all from lower order function, this you can see a lower order function to a higher order function and we will say why, why do you do this, why do you. So, in this direction if you know, if you see here we have to ask why type of questions and in this direction we have to ask, sorry, we have to ask how type of question. So, lower order to higher order. So, we can see the, with the help of a pencil you can try to draw a diagram or functional analysis system technique fast diagram for a pencil and if you try to find out on search engines over the internet you will get definitely number of figures or number of diagrams where you will see a fast diagram has been drawn for different types of products. So, I have also taken one example where the function is represented by action verb plus measurable noun. So, verb and a noun definition has to be given for the function. So, function will be represented by a verb and a noun definition. 
and another thing that is coming here is when when you do this you also do this so this is also when this function is being achieved this function also is achieved so when we are doing this function at the same time we are doing this function also when you do this you also do this so this is basically when type of analogy that is drawn so let us now try to understand all these three things what we need to understand from this diagram once we go to an example is the lower order function we need to look at the higher order function we need to look at how type of questions we need to look at why type of questions we need to look at when type of questions and then we will try to see that what are the functions which can be eliminated what are the functions which can be improved what are the functions which can be classified as the basic or the secondary function so this is the functional analysis that we would like to do now let us quickly try to understand uh, the diagram so here you see ask why secondary function basic function ask how and logic or logic so this is the same thing that we have written there so quickly now we can uh, start our diagramming approach so here we can see fast model is complete when customer needs can be mapped to the function so this is the general diagram so i want to take an example so this is a fast diagram of a pencil you can see hold pencil this is one and here we are asking how type of questions in this direction why type of questions in this direction so we can see hold pencil why we want to hold pencil to accommodate the grip and when we are accommodating the grip we must also have a protective wood coating if appearance also is important and display the information sometime on a pencil for example i am using using this stylus here also some information can be displayed so when we are accommodating the grip all these three when when this function is there all these three things are important when we are holding the pencil we are accommodating the grip we have a protective wood coating appearance is important and the information can also be displayed for example we can take an example of what example we can say save trees save girl child we can save our environment save water so such type of information can also be displayed also the name of the company the type of the pencil hb1 hb2 so that kind of information can be displayed now first is accommodate grip now once we have gripped it we have to transmit the force whatever force we are applying so for that we have to support the lead so lead has to be supported because we are applying the force so it may not many time if you apply more force the pencil breaks or the lead breaks so that has to be avoided so there is the hold then apply pressure after you are applying transmitting the force uh, force apply pressure deposit the medium what is the medium here medium is lead then make marks if you remember we have said the spread lead and make marks then once we are able to make the marks we are able to record the information and then we can maintain this information which can help us to keep the record so we can see when is coming in this direction why is coming in this direction and how is coming in this direction so if we start now asking the why and how type of questions we can say why do we hold pencil to accommodate the grip why do we accommodate the grip to transmit the force why do we transmit the force to apply the pressure why do we apply the pressure to deposit the medium why do we deposit the medium by making the marks and why do we make the marks to record the information and why do we record the information to maintain the information why do we maintain the information for keeping the records so this is why type of questions in this direction we can ask now how type of questions also how to keep the records by maintaining the information how can we maintain the information by recording 
the information how can we record the information by making the marks how we can make the marks by depositing the medium how we can deposit the medium by applying the pressure how we can apply the pressure by transmitting the force how we can transmit the force by accommodating the grip and how we can accommodate the grip by holding the pencil so this is the way now in this direction we have one type of question so when we apply pressure we can also secure the eraser on the pencil so we can have a eraser as well as a pencil then when we are depositing the medium absorb the medium we can also rub it by the eraser remove the marks because this is we have a from here we have a secure eraser also so we have double function so this color this color is representing the second function which we can achieve that is if we have secured a eraser at the end of the pencil that can also be accomplished by the pencil so this pencil can be of this type with a cap here and a eraser at the end so this eraser this eraser these are the functions in this color what is the function of the eraser now secure eraser apply pressure to the eraser it will absorb the medium it will perform the rubbing action it will remove the marks and it will correct the information so it is not only depositing the lead or making the mark it is also the pencil is also achieving the purpose of removing the marks also because it has a eraser at the end of the pencil so this is the another part of our uh, product that is being analyzed using the fast technique now here we can see that this is an entirely different function do we really need to have this function in our product suppose uh, these pencils are being used in a five star hotel for making notes by the executives who are attending a conference in that case obviously they may not like to use this pencil with the eraser at the end we they would like to use a separate eraser so that can be one of the areas where this er function of eraser can be eliminated but on the contrary if we are giving or designing a pencil which has to be used by the school going children it is always better because there are chances that they may lose the eraser sometimes or many a times so if the eraser is integrated with the pencil it is always better so depending upon the needs requirements of the customer the product will be analyzed and the decision will be taken that how it is going to benefit or help the uh, customer in satisfying the function for which the product has been bought so here we can see we have taken an example of a pencil that how and why type of questions will help us and also the multi function uh, product also can be represented in a fast diagram this color is representing the second function of eraser secure eraser apply pressure absorb medium remove marks and correct information functions of a eraser and the light color yellow background uh, boxes are representing the basic functions or the functions for the pencil or the lead lead acid pencil so this is another example which is the overhead example of a fast diagram this is the product you can say here again you can see here why type of questions from right to left how type of questions from left to right so first is input transmit current receive current convert energy now once the energy is getting converted in this direction what do we do already you have seen this is why this is how and in this direction it is when so when the energy is getting converted we can see it will generate heat so for generating heat we have to dissipate the heat and once we are dissipating the heat with the help of a fan it will generate noise then convert energy generate light because this energy the current will help us to generate the convert the energy into light that is we have a lamp or we have a bulb there which will generate the light now once you are generating the light it will project the image so once the image is projected what we can do once image is projected we can focus the image we have to support the image somewhere and then amplify the image in case of a overhead projector and then we also have to allow the safety and facilitate the 
portability objectives or specifications for this product. So, we have to ensure safety also, we have to ensure the portability also. And what is the output? The output is that we will be able to convey the information and this in this direction is again which I have written here when. So, basically again this is a giving you another uh, example of of the fast diagram previous one was related to the example of a very very common product which all of us use that is pencil this is related to uh, overhead projector. So, for overhead projector also you can see what is the input the input is a current the output is a convey information. So, we are able to understand the functions of each and every part of the product. And here we see generate heat, what will generate heat when we are converting the energy? It will be the bulb that is generating the heat. Now, this heat has to be dissipated. Now, we can say that once this diagram is ready, what are the focus areas where we can focus our attention? So, we can focus our attention on suppose one of the attention areas can be this. And how we can focus? We can say that one of the challenging aspects is that heat is generated in the overhead projector, how this can be eliminated. We can go back a step back, why the heat is generated when we are converting the energy, which means that lot of energy is required to generate the light which will be able to project the information. Obviously, we would like to look for alternatives that what are the alternatives available with us which can generate similar amount of light, but with lesser generation of heat or no generation of heat. So, we would certainly like to focus on that area that is energy conversion. Now, this why because energy conversion is unnecessarily adding these three problems into our product. What are the three problem? Generation of heat we have to then find out means and mechanisms of dissipation of this heat and finally, this is also leading to generation of noise. Why? Because for dissipation of heat we are using a small fan inside our apparatus or in our product. So, the fan when it is continuously moving will generate noise. So, we have to focus on this area and if you see the projector systems that are being used today are much more better effective, efficient and performance wise we can say more uh, reliable as compared to the old overhead projectors. Why? Because this area has been addressed. Now, the type of bulb used does not get too much of heat. There is less requirement of cooling or dissipation of heat and since there is less requirement the fan system also is designed or developed in such a way that it generates very less noise. So, we can see that once we are able to draw a fast diagram like this, we will be able to find out or we will be able to locate, we will be able to identify the areas which are not adding any value to our product, but are in a way reducing the value of our product. And therefore, once we focus on those areas, we will be able to find out the technological advancements, the material science advancements, the manufacturing technology advancements and trying to integrate those advancements into our product, we will be able to eliminate the unnecessary functions or non-value added functions in our product. So, here we can see that the fan or the cooling system is a redundant function because of the change in the technology, we can have a better cooling system which can which can help us to eliminate the noise that is being generated in the overhead projector. So, I think we can keep on discussing the topic related to overhead projector only or design of the overhead projector, but our target is to understand the technique of functional analysis system technique or the step by step procedure for constructing a fast diagram that we have been able to do successfully today. We have tried to understand that what is a fast diagram, why it is required. We have taken examples of two fast diagrams and I think if you further do self study and look for various other examples of fast diagrams for different products, you will be able to appreciate the importance of this technique. So, with this we come to the end of the second week of our discussion on this very important topic of product design using value engineering. In our next 
week of discussion we will try to focus on an another important aspect that is the functional cost relationship right now our focus only has been on the functional analysis trying to identify the best functions or the basic or the secondary functions of the product and then we have tried to analyze the function using a systematic technique that we call as fast so we will now try to relate these functions with the cost of the product and try to understand that how we can analyze the functional cost relationship for a product thank you very much